Thursdays mean a check-in with our colleagues at Live for ideas on what to do over the weekend. News out yesterday that Zook is rolling out its pop-up cinematic experience from tomorrow. The main room will be transformed into a cinema from Wednesday to Saturday nights from 6pm to 10.30pm. There will be one screening session per night showing two movies. Now in line with Halloween, The Sixth Sense and A Nightmare Before Christmas will be shown this week. After that, films in its opening month will be on the theme of For the Love of Music. Well, journalist Anjali Raguraman joins us to share more. Anjali, on Wednesdays, table packages are priced from $75. For bigger groups of three to five people, the experience costs at least $175. From Thursday to Saturday, these packages are, of course, more expensive. Despite the high costs, though, do you think people will still take it up? Oh, for sure. I think it'll be really attractive because people are so desperate to get out at this point. They just want to be in a club setting uh, no matter what, uh, how it looks now, whether it's in the form of a restaurant or whether it's a form of a cinema like Zook is going. Mm. Uh, Anjali, a two-part question mm -hmm. for you. What yes. do you make of Zook's efforts to pivot to other businesses, you know, like restaurants, spin classes and now a cinema? And by branching out to these areas, uh, does Zook risk diluting its nightlife brand? Okay, uh, typically in any other year, I would say yes, they are diluting the brand, but we are in unique circumstances. And if anything, they're, they're being very smart about it. And they're an example that brands can be creative and adaptable, you know, in given the current coronavirus situation. But and um, I would also like to think that hopefully this sets a precedent for like a lot of the other venues to be able to do the same because the fact of the matter is the nightlife scene is not just Zook. There are a lot of other smaller players that are, that are struggling and, you know, with Minister Lawrence Wong saying that phase three is going to come, but uh, nightlife businesses are not going to be a part of it. Uh, it's, it's really quite taxing. And um, given that Zook has successfully rolled out stuff like the restaurant, the spin classes, and now the movie, the cinema, um, hopefully they'll be able to use that advantageous position to help the other smaller guys lobby as well, you know, uh, despite um, the, the tough circumstances that mm. everyone is facing right now. Right, great points there, Anjali. Always great to hear from you. That was journalist Anjali Raguraman on Zook's latest offering. From one iconic landmark to another, we have talked about Zook. So let's move on to Jewel Changi Airport. It's a place where you can spend at least half the day. Also, I've heard. Mm -hmm. Olivia, I know you haven't actually <laughs> walked around yeah, that's right. Jewel before. So let's bring in travel editor Liu Siwa to give you and our viewers some ideas on what to do at Jewel. Hi, Siwa. Now, Siwa, there Hello. are the more popular spots there, like the indoor waterfall, Canopy Park, and the numerous retail and FMB outlets. But what are some mm. hidden facets? So, Jewel is vast, right? And at some point, you'll need to rest. There are these lovingly recycled wooden benches crafted, recycled from old rain trees that used to sit on the former car park at Terminal 1, upon which Jewel was built. So, um, you can, we can, so I think that there are a nice, sustainable, old school touch in an ultra modern airport. Right, Siuhua. So, for the visitor who wants a luxurious experience, as well as for somebody looking for more affordable options, what do you recommend that they add to their itinerary, so to speak? You could do a staycation. So, mm -hmm. I spent 48 hours at Jewel with back to back staycase at Yotel Air and Crown Plaza. And Yotel Air, for instance, it's designed, the rooms are designed to look like first class cabins. And there are robots coming by to serve you with towels or an extra bottle of water. Mm. And there's also a private lounge there where you can overlook um, a private corner of the gardens and the rain vortex. And should you want a laptop, the Apple store there would have you covered. And my favorite dining area is on the fifth floor, just right under the glass dome. So you can have a Japanese rice bowl or afternoon tea or, pen, uh, or cocktails with a local touch and it's all uh, it's all very chill. You can also spend the whole day at Jewel. Olivia's things half a day but yeah I can really stretch it too and a lot of it is free. 
Jewel itself is open 24 hours a day and you can clock in 10,000 steps just doing retail therapy or in my case, <laughs> I also popped by to Jurassic Mall nearby, which is free. And it's a, it's a good long walk there. Um, affordable treat was in the evening when I bought a ticket to the Glass Canopy Bridge. The ticket price is usually $8, but with a Changi Rewards car, it's, you get a discount. So you can stay as long as you want on the glass bridge, wait for the mist to swirl around. And especially in the evening, when the indoor forest is all lit up and you're eye to eye with the rain vortex, it's very magical. It's like being aloft afloat. Maybe the closest we can get to flying for a while. Mm. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Siu Hua. We've been speaking to travel editor at The Straits Times, Lee Siu Hua. You know, Harianto, I just realised today that I've never had a stuffed donut before. Don't shake your head. I prefer the traditional ones, that's why. Well, apparently, stuffed donuts are all the rage these days. You are missing out on a lot, Olivia. <laughs> now, The Sunday Times shortlisted 10 chocolate and hazelnut stuffed donuts for a blind taste test. And here to tell us more is food correspondent Eunice Quek. Uh, Eunice, before we get into where we can find the best stuffed donut in Singapore, what makes a good stuffed donut in the first place? What were the judges looking for? Okay, so the judges were looking for taste, texture and appearance. Um, each donut was given 10 points uh, for each category and that's what they were Looking for, they were looking for a good balance of uh, filling to dough, um, in particular a really good fluffy um, dough with a nice crumb, something that's not too dry because if it's too dry, it sticks to you know the roof of your mouth and then you can't finish the donut properly and it's quite unpleasant. So 10 donut options, uh, which mm -hmm. are the judges' favourites and why? Um, okay, I can't reveal too much, right? Mm. Um, so I'm just going to tell you which three made it into our top three? Um, uh -huh. And they are Nassim Hill Bakery, The Fat Kid Bakery, and Dough and Better. Now, the other two, um, The Fat Kid Bakery and Dough and Better, are actually home based businesses. So I'm really, really glad that they made it into our top three. Um, Nassim Hill is a bistro in Tanglin Road, um, and they have been doing donuts for, for quite a while already. Mm -hmm. um, and so what stood out for, for these three among the rest was um, that Fat Kid Bakery, they do these sourdough um, bombolinis. So Ooh. they're like the Italian style um, stuffed donuts. And because the batter is made with sourdough, it has a bit of a, you know, a tangy flavour that kind of balances out with the chocolate. So you get kind of two different kinds of flavours playing with each other. Um, the one in Nassim Hill is actually um, a brioche donut, mm. so that's um, very tasty, very fluffy as well. And for dough and batter, uh, what really stood out was the Nutella filling that one of our judges really, really, really liked. Oh. All right. Oh, oh my God, I'm excited now to find out which <laughs> one actually takes the top spot. Yep. Right? Well, thank you so much, Eunice. <laughs> You've made us go nuts over donuts. <laughs> <laughs> that was food correspondent Eunice Quack wrapping up live picks. Now you can read Eunice's full review in this weekend's Sunday Times.